was in fact a God who bleeds, a God who dies. God the Son became true human, a true human being, for the one purpose, to die for us. When he, compa- when he compared himself to a good shepherd, he said, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me. He laid it down even though it meant experience in human suffering. When he was in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil, he ate nothing during those days. And when he ate bread, he was hungry. He was dependent on the kindness of other humans during his ministry. He said, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He kept the cross always in view. When the day drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to close to Jerusalem. When he was when he was warned or physically harmed from Herod, he replied, Go and tell that fox, behold. I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow. And the third day I can my course. Behold the life giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Behold the life giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Behold, the life-giving cross on which was hung, the salvation of the whole world. O come, let us worship him. When the man Jesus our Lord finished his course on the cross, he was the perfect sacrifice. Like lambs offered in the temple, he was innocent. Like Passover lambs not born in his holy body, not a bone in his holy body was broken. Though the sh- shredding of his body, he made forgiveness available to all who, re- who rely on him for eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins to God and our Heavenly Father as we spend a few minutes in silent reflection. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we come before you, not, you, not as we wish, nor as we desire, desire to bring but bringing our faults and failures, our willful sins, and our thoughtless errors. We have put our own sinful comfort ahead of loving you, out of fear of those who do the world and the shelter. We have spoken, acted, and thought loveless things towards our neighbor. We cannot free ourselves. Forgive us, renew us, team martyrs, and set our feet on the path of loving obedience to your will for the sake of the man Jesus, who is your Son and our brother. Amen. Just before his, he breathed his last, our Lord declared, finished, the sacrifice for sin that he had always intended. So as a call and ordained servant of Christ, I there forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Lord be with you. And I also be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to open our hearts to know the great love of our Savior. Grant that our worship this day will enable us to grasp the full measure of his love and his death of his suffering. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith in his physical sacrifice so that we may rejoice together in his bodily resurrection. 
Through your Son, the man Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the reading of God's Word. Our epistle reading this evening comes from Hebrews chapter 4 and 5. Jesus, a true human being, was tempted as we are and prayed to his heavenly Father and ours. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing. mercy and peace be to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A God who bleeds and a God who dies. Behold the man on the cross. This is his purpose. This is why God is man. This is why the eternal second person of the triune God has taken on human flesh. This is the reason Behold the man on the cross, bleeding, 
gasping, suffering, and dying. Behold the man, behold his hands, which the night before were washing his disciples' feet. Now they are pinned with nails to the rough crossbeam of the instrument of torture and execution. Behold the hands that scooped Adam out of the dirt, but are now stained with the blood and dirt. Behold the fingers with which he touched lepers, struck and in, stuck into the ears of deaf men, and picked up breath, declare it to be his body. Now the jerk uncontrollably every time that he had to pull himself up on the nails through his wrist to take a breath. But this is why God has hands. Behold the man, behold his skin that has been shredded with the Roman flagrum, which lacerating bone shards and bruising steel balls were woven into the leather thongs to inflict the most damage to the skin and the greatest suffering of the one being beaten. Behold the skin on his back, which is now a bloody pulp that he must now scrape up and down on the cross as he struggles to breathe. But this is why God has skin. Behold the knees, skinned and bruised from falling under the weight of the officer and later the soldiers. Oh, excuse me. Behold the knees, skinned and bruised. Behold the knees, skin, and bruised under the weight of the cross. He was, he was for a time forced to carry out to the place of the skull. But this is why God has legs. Behold the man. Behold his feet. nailed to the cross. Bearing his weight as he dies. Behold the feet that walk from town to town. As he taught his disciples. Healing the sick and preach the good news of man's release from the captivity of sin and death. Behold the feet that Mary anointed and poured of expensive ointment on, washed with her tears and wiped with her hair. Behold the feet that are now bound in place. Behold the feet that must endure static pain as they push up on the nail, pinning them in place. Behold his heel, which is this act of dying, is crushing the head of the serpent, destroying the kingdom of Satan, the answering for mankind's sinful rebellion. But this is why God has feet. Behold a man, behold his head, with the streams of blood flowing from each piece of one of the thorns that stuck from the crown. It was pressing into his skin. Behold his head that should rightly be crowned with majesty and glory, surpassing every earthly king's crown. Behold the head over which has been hung the sign, listing the charges that brought his death sentence. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Behold the head that like his father's David's, would have been anointed to make him king. But this is why God has head. Behold a man, behold his face, which has flesh swelling and bruising from the blows dealt first by the high priests, <coughs> officer then later by the soldiers jeering at him jeering at him to prophesy. Who is that that struck you? Behold his eyes, which in the very beginning looked at all he had made, seeing that it was very, very good. Behold the eyes that looked with mercy and compassion on the crowds, on his disciples, and on the sick. Behold his lips, which spoke words of absolution, but now are dry 
and crack deep from thirst, a thirst deeper than you will ever know. Behold the cheeks that were kissed by his mother. Behold how his face contorts in agony. But this is why God has a face. Behold the man. Behold his lungs as they slowly fill with fluid. Behold the lungs that breathe the breath into life of Adam's nostrils. Behold the lungs that in this hanging posture cannot exhale without the man pulling his whole body up on the nails to open up his airway. Behold the lungs that expel one final breath as he cries, it is finished. Gives up his spirit and dies. But this is why God has lungs. Behold the man. Behold his bones which remain unbroken throughout the torturous ordeal. Behold the reason every sacrifice, every Passover lamb, every bull for the whole burnt offering, every scapegoat, every ram, every turtle dove had ever been healthily and intact. With no broken bones or disfigurements, a perfect specimen of its kind. Behold the soldiers who with their clubs shatter the legs of each of the thieves crucified with Jesus, but refrain from doing the same to Jesus. But this is why God has bones. Behold the man. Behold his side into which the soldier thrusts his spear, causing a river of blood and water to pour forth, <clears throat> confirming that he is truly and completely dead. His heart has stopped. Behold the deep sleep of death that has come upon this man. On the sixth day of the week, behold the material from the side of the crucified man that God will fashion into his bride, the church, and give her to him when he awakes. Behold the sight of the man which disbelieving Thomas will be invited to shove his rude hand into, but this is why God has a side. Behold the man, behold his blood, which pour from his lifeless body, staining the wooden beams and the cross, spilling onto the dirt, rendering the soil, watering his creation. Behold the blood that he first shed when he was an eight-day-year-old boy, undergoing the sign by which the Jewish boys were made Israelites. Behold the blood for which the bloodthirsty crowd ironically asked for exactly what they needed. His blood be on us, in our children. Matthew 27, 25. Behold the blood that was foreshadowing or foreshadowed on the very day of atonement when the blood of the sacrifice was splattered on the mercy seat, on the altar, and on the people. Behold the blood he gave to his disciples in the cup the night before, telling them this function, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Behold the blood that proves that this God was also truly and fully man, a brother in blood to us sinners. This is the body by which this high eternal high priest enters once for all into the most holy place, giving sinful men and women access to the holy God but this is why God has blood. This is no accident, nor is it a tragedy. Jesus himself said, No one takes it, my life, from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. John 10, 18. This is why God is man. Not to teach you how to be good, not to show you the right way to live, not to set a perfect example, not to impart his wise teaching.
God is a man so that he can die for men and for women. He has a life so that he can lay it down in exchange for yours. Behold the man, Jesus. Would ask the congregation to please rise as we confess the faith we believe in the, in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray for the whole Christian church that our Lord God would defend her against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and in the world of in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of of your mercy, so that your church spread throughout all nations may be defended against the adversary, the adversary, and may serve you in true faith and preserved in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all the ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in the holy church, in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens. That our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy that, having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth in your church, increase the faith and the understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by the holy water of baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of men, and because, <coughs> excuse me, and because you have ordained for the, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well, all the power that exists in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially the people that we hold in our hearts, pastors, preachers, ministers, also our president and also our Congress in the United States, our Governor Jay, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that, that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray to our Lord God Almighty that he would deliver the world from all error. Take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, and grant health to the sick and a safe journey to all who travel. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, 
May the prayers of those who, in any tribulation or distress, cry to you, graciously come before you, so that, all, that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold, in your manifold help to comfort. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who are outside the church, that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error. Call them to faith in the true and living God and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into his family, the church. Almighty and everlasting God, because you seek not the death but life of all who hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of you, free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory, the Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all accord, grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord that we may serve you in true fear, to praise and glorify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies that God would remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are both needful for them and profitable for their salvation. O Almighty, everlasting God, through your Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation, by, that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and one heart with us and with your whole Christian church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth that God would send down his blessing upon them and graciously dispose our heart to enjoy them according to his own good will. O Lord, Father Almighty, by your word you created, and you continue to bless and uphold all things. We pray you so to reveal to us your word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that through his dwelling in our hearts, we may, by your grace, be made ready to receive your blessings on all the fruits of the earth and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. Praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to live us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the passion.
the passion of our Lord from the Gospel of Luke chapter 22 the plot to kill Jesus now the feast of unleavened bread drew near which is called the Passover and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to put Jesus to death for they feared the people then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot and there was of the number of the twelve he went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them and they were glad and agreed to give him money so he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of a crowd. The Passover with the disciples. Then came the day of the unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare? Jesus said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? and he will show you a large upper room, furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the cup, and after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table, for the Son of Man goes and is, as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. A dispute arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater? the one who reclines at the table, or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigns to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded you to leave you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, 
Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times that you know me. And Jesus said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. Jesus also said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one, for I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And when and he was numbered with the transgressors, for what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Lord, look, Lord, here are two swords. And Jesus said to them, It is enough. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter in temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow, and he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and a man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear, and he healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away. Peter denies Jesus. They brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man was also with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
Jesus is mocked. Now the men who were holding Jesus in custody were mocking him as they beat him. And they blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they said many th other things against him, blaspheming him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes. And they led him away to their council, and they said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But Jesus said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on the Son of Man shall be seated at the right hand of God, of the God, of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of Man then? And Jesus said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Jesus before Pilate. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him over to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had long desired to see him, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see some sign done by him. So he questioned him at some length, and he made no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by accusing him, and Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then arraying him in splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that very day, for before this they had been at odds with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was misleading the people. And after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Look, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore punish and release him. But they all cried out together. Barabbas was a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection, started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! First kill, crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. I will therefore punish and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified. Crucify him! Crucify him! And their voices prevailed. So Pilate decided that their demand should be granted. So he released Barabbas, who had been thrown into first prison for insurrection and murder, for those whom they asked. But he delivered Jesus over 
to their will. The Crucifixion. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people, men of women who were mourning and laminating for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? To others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Father, forgive them, for they, not, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. It read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging railed at him, saying, Are you not Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly. For we are receiving the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for the spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breast. And all of his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. The burial of Jesus. Now there was a man named Joseph, from the Jewish town of Arimathea, Arimathea, he was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to, the, to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen shroud, and laid it in a tomb cut in stone, where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The woman who had come with him 
from Galilee followed and saw the tomb, and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the, to the commandment. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. It causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously behold your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to betray and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death upon a cross, and to thank the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 